Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this episode. We're going to take a look at some cool new features inside Adobe CS6. One of my favorite features is the new Blur Lab inside of Photoshop. I like this because I often have to make background plates for use in chroma key projects, and unfortunately, the depth of field is never right. Here's how things work. I've got a photo here, and I'm perfectly happy with it, but what I want to do is start to process a bit. So I'll just duplicate the background, and in this case, since it's a smart object, I'll rasterize the layer. The new Blur Lab cannot work as a smart object, but it is very versatile. And I could choose between a field blur, an iris blur, and a tilt shift. Let's start with the tilt shift one, which is one of the easiest to understand. This allows you to go ahead and create an in-focus area, and then drag to create a transition zone. And then you can go ahead and set the transition from in focus to out of focus. Notice as you start to pull that up how things go ahead and warp a bit. If you need to, you can go ahead and just click outside of here and rotate that, and that allows you to create a nice focal plane. And again, you've got independent dragging controls here if you want to go ahead and adjust what's in focus and what's out of focus. And this lets you create some nice pools. And you can use this in all sorts of imagery, particularly high angle shots is where it's going to look most natural. Another area that I like is the field blur. And this allows you to add little control points. So I could just drop one here and say, oh, that's very blurry. But up here where my subject is going to stand, let's go ahead and set that to zero. And there's no blur. And same for right here, that's also a zero point. But up here, let's go ahead and add another one, but I'll back that off just a little bit. And you see that you can completely and interactively drop points, sort of like gravity wells, and define what's in and out of focus. And this gives you total control over the image. If you need to as well, if you want to add a vignette effect, you can use the iris blur here, and this allows you to drag out the edges here to define a nice sort of power window and you see you've got these points for the transition zone. Add the Alt or Option key, and you can independently position those as needed, and that works really well. Now, one of the things I like to take advantage of is the ability to go ahead and save this out to the channel. So when I click OK, it's going to actually apply the blur and make a depth mat. In this way, you could take a single frame from a video file and bring it into Photoshop. Make your custom blur with the Blur Lab and then save out that channel mat or depth mat. With that, kick it back over to After Effects and apply the camera lens blur effect and just use that depth mat to define what's in and out of focus for moving footage. So you see it did that blur. If I take a look at the channels panel there, you'll see how those field blurs combined to create a complex depth mat to define what's in and what's out of focus. And again, you could absolutely use that on a video file to create custom blurring. That's the new Blur Lab inside Adobe Photoshop. Lots of ramifications if making backdrops for green screen for keying, as well as working with video files. For Creative Cow, my name's Rich Harrington.